Dude, are you drinking it out of the piss uh, cup? No, no. Yeah, the, the Berkey filter's just getting a little old. It's not what it used to be. Looks like the piss cup, dude. Oh. No. You're right. Yeah, this... This is the piss cup. If the hurricane hitting Puerto Rico has taught us anything, I think it's that the it's very critical that people have access to water. It's been a couple of weeks, and still there's a lot of people on the island that don't have water. Uh, this video is one I've been thinking about doing for a long time, and seeing that uh, crisis unfold really put you know flame under my butt. You know, maybe I should do this today. Not that it's going to help anyone in Puerto Rico, because anyone that can't get access to water can't get access to this video either. Uh, but I think it's a critical skill for us to all know. Now, the title of this video is that you can save all this money on Berkey water filters. That you know, uh, you know, get them for an incredible discounted price. And what I mean by that is that if you can learn how to make your own primitive filters, and you're putting water into your Berkey filters that is much cleaner, then those filters are going to last you much, much, much longer than they would otherwise. Uh, in an in, in ex, uh, extended crisis situation, when you just can't run out to the store or you know order online to get more Berkey filters, uh, being able to extend the life of the filters that you do have is really critical. And if you are in the unfortunate situation of not having any kind of commercially made filter, having some basic sense of how to uh, filter water is really important. So that's what we're going to do today. What I've got here in front of me is just a big... Um, flower pot that I got from some trees that I got. Uh, you can see it's got a, a hole right in the bottom. There's also holes around the periphery. That's not ideal. Uh, but, you know, I'm using what I've got. Uh, but really what you can do is any sort of a container that you can put a hole in the bottom or that already has a hole in the bottom, you can use uh, as a water filter. Now this one is pretty wide uh, and the reason that I have such a large one, uh, I'll explain a little bit later, but uh, the bigger the container that you can use, not only the more water that you can process, but also the better job that it's going to do of it. Um, and the, the essential way that you're uh, processing your water is just putting a lot of filtration in there. We're going to start with just a rock. Um, none of my stuff is super clean. You'd want to get the stuff as clean as you possibly could. This is just a dirty rock I found on the ground. We're going to take that and place it right over the hole, right at the bottom. Uh, and the purpose of that is so that uh, all of our filtering material isn't going to fall uh, right out through that hole. The next thing what we're going to do, and there's all different ways of making your own filters. This is just one way. It's a simple way that I think uh, most people could manage, you know, just what they have on hand. The next thing we're going to put in there is some sand. Just some dirty sand. I've got some leaves in there. We're going to drop the sand right over the top there. And sand is going to be the principal ingredient in here. All right. I'm going to fill this up maybe about halfway. I've got some chunks of wood and some stones and things in here. Any of that stuff I'm going to throw out because that's not helping us do the filtering. Get a little bit more sand. All right. So now what I've got here is a bunch of sand on the bottom and I'm sculpting it to be kind of a concave pattern. And the idea is you want the water to be directed towards the center. And this gets to what I was talking about earlier about wanting a very large container. You want the container to be very wide so when you put water in on the top it's not going around this, uh, to the edges and then shooting right down the sides circumventing all the filtration in the middle. What you really want to be doing is having this thing be wide enough so that you're putting the water in the middle and it's going straight down through the center of it and it's not reaching the sides and getting around those edges. So as wide as you can make it, uh, that's going to help you both in being able to filter a lot and also to prevent that circumnavigation of your, your filtration. The next thing we're going to put in is just some ash and I just shoveled this out of a fire. Now you want this to be ash from clean wood, you don't want to have pressure treated wood ash or anything like that. I'm going to take this and put a nice healthy pile of that right in the middle. Now if you could get activated charcoal or if you stock that, have that in your preps, that's a great prep, I have that in my preps, but if you don't have it, char uh, just regular wood ash is going to be really helpful. So I'm going to put a bunch of that in there, and again, I'm going to take it and make a nice sort of concave shape so that it's bring the water right down into the middle. Next we're going to put some more sand on the top of it. The purpose of the uh, charcoal, by the way, is it's going to be collecting uh, a lot of the chemicals that uh, might be in the water that you have. It's not, uh, it's, well, it's slightly physically 
doing filtration, but its primary purpose is chemical filtration because all sorts of chemicals bond with the, the rough, rugged surface of that. Uh, I'm throwing rocks into my compost pile over there. It's kind of self-defeating. Uh, the, uh, the chemicals are going to bond to the surface of the, of the, uh, the wood ash. Now, activated carbon uh, has been treated uh, through, you know, there's a couple different methods of doing that. That's kind of outside the scope of what, you know, the individual can really do. I, I mean, an individual can do it, but it's kind of crazy. It just, you know, makes more sense to buy it. But you can get a similar effect from just the, the wood ash. Uh, it's not quite as effective uh, because it, it doesn't have quite as many... Um, uh, like receptor sites to accept uh, different chemicals and things, but wood ash is going to get you a lot of the way there. So now that I've got this down here, I'm going to be kind of packing it down because what you want to do is you want the the uh, the spaces between all of your your bits in here to be nice and small, so you're you know, obviously filtering things out. I'm just popping some rocks out of there. That's a uh, rock. That's sand. And again, I'm working for that kind of concave shape here. So we get that packed down. I'm going to put a little more sand in. And this is just sand that I dug up from the ground with some clean fill sand from earlier. I think I'll put rocks back there. Those two rocks? Yeah. Alright. Getting these around. Pull some roots out. A little stick. Packing it all down, and again maintaining that nice bell shape so that the water is filtered or um, funneled towards the center. You do not want the water going up around the sides because then it doesn't get filtered at all. Another rock. Oops. Okay. Now we're just about up at the top here, and that brings us to our last layer. Remember, we put a stone in the bottom, then we put a layer of sand, concaved it. We put our our fireplace ash in there, concaved it, got it all kind of packed down, and uh, then we did some more sand, and now the last layer is just regular topsoil dirt. This is dirt that has a higher clay content to it, and the reason that we're putting that on the top is because it is going to really kind of funnel that, that water right down to the center. It's a good topper layer to keep things from spilling over the over the edges. Now when you fill this up, you want to make sure that you're not putting so much water in that you're maxing it out and again flooding around those edges. Alright. The more clay content you have in this top layer, the slower your filter is going to filter through the water, but the better job it's going to do of it. Again, if you're looking for clay kind of topsoil, you want soil that you can ball up in your hand, make a shape that, when it's moist, and you know that that's going to have a fair amount of clay content to it. If it's really sandy or rocky soil, it's not going to maintain that shape. All right, I think I've got a decent amount here. I'm just going to put a little more around the edges, just to again make sure that my water doesn't run around and and skip being filtered. A little millipede. Now if you do one of these filters yourself in an emergency situation, it will make your water a heck of a lot cleaner. Would I drink water straight out of this thing if I had any other alternative whatsoever? Absolutely not. Uh, the water that you're, uh, is coming through here could still have viruses in it, it could still have bacteria in it. The point of this filter is to get as much as possible out of there. If you did not have a secondary filter, um, like some kind of a ceramic filter, activated charcoal filter, if you didn't have something like that and you were just using this, you, at a very bare minimum, after you get the water out of this, you would want to uh, boil that water uh, just to kill any kind of bacteria in there. But this is a better than nothing kind of filter. And the water we're going to be doing today, I'll just stir it up here and get you kind of a a close look at that. This is water right out of my fish tanks. Uh, this is the water that spills over. It's full of algae and fish poop and all sorts of other nastiness. We're going to pour this in and see how it comes out on the bottom over here. So I'm going to take this 
And again, no, I don't want to overload this filter, so I'm only going to pour in what can go right in on the top. It's pooling, which is just what you'd expect because there's clay on the surface. And that is about it. Now this water is starting to go through and it's going to saturate. Uh, it's going to saturate right down into here. I may need to get some more containers of this because it, it, may, it may not actually all go through. It may just wet what's in there. Uh, but I, I will just continue to fill this up until I get stuff out coming out the bottom. And we'll just cut to see what that looks like. Well, the water's gone down a little bit. It's going through slowly. You know, look down below here, see if anything's come into the, the cup yet. No, not, not much. Actually, not anything yet. Uh, and when water does start coming through there, I'm anticipating that the water is going to be free of a lot of the algae and everything that we were trying to filter out, but it's not going to be free of other contaminants because this is a fresh uh, water filter. We've just put it together, and there is sediment and dirt that, that needs to be washed and flushed through this, uh, this system. So when the water comes through, it's probably going to have a brownish color uh, because it's you know, still going to have uh, you know, dust and sediment from the dirt that we just put in there. Uh, and that's normal and that's expected. Uh, what you would do in a crisis situation is you would build this unit and then just start putting the, the cleanest water you possibly can through it, and over time it'll start coming out uh, cleaner and cleaner. I think it's really important to have all different approaches for solving uh, your your needs uh, and issues during, you know, well, through any part of your life, but especially during a crisis situation. We're in the garden right here, and this year it wasn't really a great year for my garden. It was mostly just through neglect on my part. I think this is probably my biggest crop, is just these, these grasses. I don't know if the seeds are edible. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with them. Uh, I had some, some pumpkins did all right, and the fruit trees did really well because you don't really need to do anything for the fruit trees, you just, they kind of do their own thing. Uh, and I got a, a killer crop of uh, peaches and apples. Uh, here's a peach tree right here, and they're, oh, these really wonderful peaches. I, I love, I love fresh from the tree peaches. Um, so these did really, really great, uh, but a lot of the rest of it didn't. And, and uh, for that reason, I think it's just an illustration of why it's so important to have uh, multiple uh, ways of getting anything done. Again, like just for ordinary life, but especially during a crisis, because if one thing doesn't work, you want to have some backups for that. And that's why we're talking about the water filtration today, because, um, you know, while you might be someone that has lots of, uh, you know, preparations, you may have all your, uh, you know, Berkey water filters all prepped, stacked, and ready to go, but you never know what's going to happen. You may have to bug out, uh, you may have a house fire, and the stuff gets destroyed. Um, it's just, it's always good to have some backup methods to do anything. And being able to build your own primitive water filter, I think, is a really critical skill that can really save people's lives in a pinch. And we're all done. And as you can see, the results are really crystal clear. I'm really quite surprised. Uh, normally, I said I would expect there to be some kind of brownish sediment washing out from the sand and the dirt and everything. I'm not seeing that in here. And, you know... I'm just going to guess that I can attribute that to the fact that this is the largest primitive water filter I've ever built. So there's just a lot more filtering happening than what I'm used to. And also the materials that I grabbed for this were, were just out and they'd been being rained on for uh, quite, you know, you know, a couple of years really. So the sand I put into here is probably cleaner than I'm used to using. And the dirt I put in here, same. It's, it's had a lot of that sediment already washed out of it. So I'm really surprised there's just a few little bits in here. It looks practically drinkable. I wouldn't drink it because these kind of filters don't really have that much to say about bacteria and viruses, uh, you know, biological threats. But if you take this and you boil it for five minutes and then let it cool down, uh, that would be totally drinkable. Or you could run it through one of your commercial filters. And like I, I said in the opening, uh, in, you know, I titled this video, imagine how much longer your filters for your commercial filters are going to last if you're running pretty much crystal clear looking water through them versus the sludge that I had earlier. Uh, you know, I'm not going to spec, I speculated in the, in the title of the video, uh, but I don't know exactly how much longer they're going to last, but I think common sense tells you that they're going to last a lot longer if you're running clean water through, or water that looks essentially clean versus that sludge that I had earlier. So that's not only going to save you money, uh, you know, if you're uh, doing this uh, in, you know, normal times when you could go out and buy filters and you may have to buy more if you're running dirtier water through. But in a crisis, it could really save your life because you're going to get so much more mileage out of those filters and they are going to provide you so much more clean water per filter if you're running water through that is, uh, that is much cleaner looking. So give it a try. As you saw, it's dirt, sand, pieces of trash, things of that nature. It's, there's not that much to this. And this kind of simple technology can really save a lot of people's lives if they uh, 
took the time to learn it. Or, you know, you just watch another ultimate knife, ultimate survival knife video. These are the kind of skills that save lives, though, I think. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.